Noah looked with intense focus. This was a big decision. His eyes went over each jar. Each was filled with candy of every flavor. His eyes stopped at the sour and continued to the peppermint sticks. Another favorite flavor of his, but he continued looking. One jar kept catching his attention. It was filled with his favorite of all time candy. At the end, he knew he was going to get it, but he wanted to look over his options. And his hand reached in, pulled out several sticks of wintergreen candy. He walked over and put them on the counter. An old man with a kind smile looked down and glanced between the candy and a small piece of paper in his hand. Uh, for what I can tell, wintergreen sticks ain't on this list here. Noah looked down and put his hands on the sticks. I'm sorry, Mr. Hanley, I'll put them back. The old man put his hand on Noah's. No, nah, no, nah, I didn't say you couldn't get them. Fear your ma wouldn't mind you getting them. As far as I can tell, a few wintergreen sticks. Fair price for delivery of goods. Mr. Handler winked. Let me get the rest of these items. Noah smiled back. Thank you, sir. He walked around the general store as Mr. Handler grabbed a few things around the store and put them in a small apple box. He then took the box to Noah. Inside was a small bag of flour, a bag of coffee grounds, and ten cents worth of nails plus an apple. Now, Mr. Handler handed the box to Noah. Here you are, young man. Tell your mother she can pay the tab the next time she or your pa is in town. Yes, sir. Mr. Handler waved as Noah left the store. He put the box down and worked the handle on the water pump for the horse trough in front of the store. He drank the cool water until he had his fill. Noah picked up the box and squinted in the summer heat. Even on the shady porch, the heat was oppressive, and Noah could only think about the long walk home. The five miles seemed impossible in this heat, but he had no other choice. He walked down the storefront that lined Main Street. The more he could stay in the shade of the buildings, the better. Noah walked, looking down as he ran into someone. Uh, sorry, he said, looking up and seeing an older woman. Oh, Noah, the older woman said as she ruffled his hair. Think nothing of it, young man. It's good to see you. She leaned down and pinched both of his cheeks. Such beautiful brown eyes, just like your mother's. Noah tried to lean his head back in a failed attempt to escape the cheek pinches. Sorry, I ran into you, Mrs. Winter. Mrs. Winter waved it off. It's fine. No harm done. Please tell your mother I'm looking forward to her chicken and dumplings at homecoming this Sunday at church. I will, Mrs. Winter. Mrs. Winter ruffled his hair again. Such a good boy. Run along now. Noah continued walking, opening and closing his mouth, trying to ease the pain of his cheeks. From what he could tell, he wouldn't suffer permanent damage. As he reached the edge of town, Noah put down the apple box and wiped his forehead. The sun was beating down on him and it made Noah feel like he was cooking. He picked up the box and started walking. It was already going to be mid-afternoon when he got back and he didn't want to waste any more time. Noah walked towards his house. The trail cut through the massive woods that covered most of the land. Every once in a while, there'd be a clearing of a homestead. Those were few and far between. This wasn't the most direct route, but on the way, he would cross a large creek, and he knew the cool running water would be a blessing in this heat. Noah loved walking this trail. The shade of the trees helped stay cool in the heat, and he just loved walking, letting his mind wander as he listened to the sounds of the forest. Sometimes a deer would cross his path, and he would stop and watch. He never wanted to disturb the deer. He loved just watching them. They'd always run off and Noah would go in his way. His father spoke about the bison out west, how big they were. Noah always wanted to see one. He couldn't believe something could be so big. His father promised one day he would go west to see him. Noah's father told stories how millions of them would run in a huge herd across the prairie. He couldn't wait to get old enough to go west and see that. Noah missed his father always away helping his brother on the Mississippi River. Noah's uncle ran a riverboat that ran cargo up and down the Mississippi River. He was hurt a couple months ago and he needed help running the ship. Noah's mind wandered thinking about how he missed his father and how he would come back and tell him stories and take him fishing. That was their favorite thing to do. Noah loved just sitting and being with his father on the lake shore. It was even better when he caught the biggest fish, not his father. The last two months were hard without him. Noah and his mother had to do more chores to keep the farm going. He could remember the day his father left. He told Noah that he was, he was the man of the house and to keep the farm and his mother safe. Sometimes at the end of the day, he would sit in the barn. He would think about all that he had done that day. It made him feel important. How proud his father would be. 
when he got back. Last week, Noah had even fixed part of the fence by himself. His mother was very impressed, said so herself. She also said hard work like that deserved a reward, and made apple pie out of the apples that Noah collected the day before. The only thing Noah didn't like was feeding the chickens or getting the eggs. Now, the chickens were fine. It was that mean old rooster. Almost every day, he would chase Noah and peck and claw at him. Noah swore one day he would eat that bird for Sunday dinner. It didn't help that sometimes when it chased Noah, his mother and father would be watching and start to laugh. Well, they tried not to. But they couldn't help it. Noah would get angry and storm off to the barn. And when he calmed down, he always apologized. He couldn't wait until his dad was home. His mind wandered as he walked across the field, and after a while, he heard the sound of flowing water. He quickened his pace. His throat was dry and kind of hurt, and finally he made it to the bank of the creek. At its highest, it was waist high, and right now, it was knee high. Noah walked across and sighed. The cool water felt like heaven to his overheating body. Once again, he put the box down and pulled out the apple. He placed it in between some rocks under the water. He shook his shirt off, went back into the creek, he sat in the water and laid back. The water rushed over him, sat up and started drinking. Noah drank until he was almost full. If he drank too much, he can get cramps as he walked the next few miles. Minutes went by as he splashed and dunked his head in the water. He reached over and grabbed the apple. It wasn't cold cold, but it wasn't as hot as it was. He ate it, smiled. That apple hit the spot. Noah threw the core in the field next to the creek, got out, put his shirt back on, and sat next to a tree in the embankment. In the heat, he started to feel drowsy. And in the shade. And in the shade of the tree. He fell asleep. Noah awoke with a start. He looked around. The sun was left at an hour from setting. He ran and picked up the apple box and started running home. He couldn't believe he fell asleep. His mom would be so worried about him. It would be after dark when he got home. Noah ran as fast as he could with the box, but it was slowing him down. He tried as hard as he could to keep his thighs from slamming into the box as he ran. Noah's fears came true as a pain started in his side. He had hoped it would be enough time that he wouldn't cramp up, but he had been wrong. Up ahead was an abandoned homestead. He could stop there for a while to recover and be reasonably safe as he did so. Noah pushed on in a race with the sun, panting with his bare feet hurting. Noah reached the homestead. It wasn't a welcoming sight. The wood looked old and creaked in the wind. The roof was starting to sag. The house was a long one-room structure. The back had a chimney and the front was the doorway. On each side was four windows. Almost half of them were broken. Noah walked the last hundred feet to the house. He looked at the sun, only a tiny sliver of sky separated it from the horizon. He went to the house, sat the box on a large hearth, and sat next to it. The pain started to subside as he looked around. The house was empty, save for the dining table. Noah suspected it was left behind because it was too big and heavy to take. Once he caught his breath, he started to walk around the empty space. He stood at the front door and looked around. The homestead had about an acre in front of it cleared of trees. He could see an occasional stump. Beyond the clearing was thick woods. He scanned the woods and stopped. Tingles shot through his body as he saw someone standing in the shadow of the trees. The figure was in tattered black clothing, skin as white as alabaster. Noah saw the figure had no hair, long fingers. He turned and ran inside. He went to the window and looked back into the woods. Nothing was there darkness was starting to fall and Noah wanted to be desperately out of there. He was maybe three miles from home, but he never felt further away from it. He ran and he grabbed the box. He turned and standing in the doorway was the figure. Noah screamed and dropped the box. The figure disappeared. He slowly walked to the table, scanning the windows. He tipped it over. He checked the legs. Thankfully, one was loose. Moving it back and forth, he broke it loose from the table. He looked back up and was face to face with a figure on the other side of the window. Noah got a good look at it. Its head had no hair. It had pointed ears and it opened its mouth and bared its teeth that were long and pointed. Noah swung out of instinct, but the monster grabbed it and ripped the table leg outside. Noah went to jump back and tripped over his feet, falling onto the floor. He held still, listening. He heard the monster making sounds like a rapid series of choking. 
Then his mind raced. He remembered stories that he was told by the fire. Monsters. Vampires. Noah started to cry when he heard the stories. He couldn't believe that it was real. He was told that they were just stories. He kneeled and started to pray. And he only stopped as he heard the sounds above him. A hole in the roof where the vampire mocked him with its long hands in prayer and making whimpering sounds. It disappeared again. Noah heard the choking sounds again and realized it was laughter. He ran and picked up and slammed the table onto the floor. Another leg broke off. Noah picked it up and held it in both hands. He couldn't help it, but he started to cry. He wished that he was stronger, as strong as his dad. He was going to die there. There was nothing he could do about it. He took a deep breath and tried to remember the stories that he heard. Vampires couldn't be in daylight. If he could, if he could hold off until sunrise, he would be okay. If he, if he stabbed the vampire in the heart, he could kill it. Noah slowly looked around, constantly scanning everything around him. He slowed his breathing down in an effort not to make any more noise. The choking sounds came from his right. The vampire was at the back window. Noah, Noah stood still to look unafraid and strong. But really, his body was filled with paralyzing fear. Another fact came to Noah's mind as he spoke slowly and deep, trying to sound unafraid. You can't come into a home uninvited. The vampire made the choking sound and stuck its head in a broken pane in the window. It spoke. The voice sounded like strained hissing. This isn't your home. The choking sounds came again, and the vampire started to slowly walk to the front of the house, dragging its nails in the windows as it did so. Noah's body started to shake as he continued to cry. The vampire neared the front of the house when it stopped as a wolf howled nearby. It moved quickly to the door and went inside the house. Noah saw it was smiling as it neared. Noah readied himself. Tears rolling down his face, the vampire made choking sounds, laughing as it neared. Noah tensed, ready to swing as the vampire opened its mouth. The window to the left exploded as a large shape lunged through it. It slammed into the vampire and they both hit the ground. Noah watched as they fought, still holding the table leg, ready to swing. In the moonlight, Noah saw that it was a wolf attacking the vampire. He had seen many coyotes, but never a wolf. It was, it was huge, bigger than him. Noah had heard about wolves. He, he didn't know they could get that big. The wolf and the vampire rolled on the ground. The wolf kept trying to go for the throat and the vampire barely keeping it at bay. He saw one of the vampire's hands blur and swipe the wolf on its side. It made a sound of pain and hopped off of the vampire. Noah saw blood dripping to the floor. In the moonlight, it looked black. Both creatures circled. Two predators locked in mortal combat. Neither was paying any attention to him. Noah would have ran for the door, but he was trapped. The vampire hissed and then lunged at the wolf. The wolf ran and threw its body into the legs of the vampire. The vampire tripped and in an instant, it had got behind him, jumped onto its back and it fell to the floor. It bit the vampire in the neck. Noah heard bones cracking. The wolf started shaking its head violently as it kept biting. Bones cracking, blood flowed and flesh ripped with one last bite and shake. The vampire's head was ripped from its body. The wolf shook its head and flung it into a corner. With its face covered in black, oozing blood, it howled. In the house, the sound was almost deafening and vibrated through Noah's body. The wolf walked to the prone body of the vampire without thinking. Noah ran to the door. The wolf moved with silent speed and stopped, blocking the door with its body. Noah froze. A low growl came from the beast. He went outside and started sniffing the air. It prowled the cleared area in front of the homestead, and then it turned, and it walked to Noah. The wolf went behind him and pushed him in with his head. Noah stumbled, and the wolf pushed again. Not too hard, but enough to get Noah moving. Once outside, Noah started running home, and behind him he heard the wolf howl again. Noah ran down the final trail that cut through the woods near his house. Over his pounding heartbeat, Noah thought that he heard the crashing noise as if someone was running alongside him, deep in the woods. The noise passed him. There was only the sound of his feet on the dirt and his heavy breathing. Tears welled up in his eyes as he saw the light of his home up ahead. He burst out of the woods and ran across the small clearing. He leapt up the three steps that led to the porch. The door flew open as Noah opened it and inside he saw his ma. 
Noah! She cried as she ran and embraced him. Where were you? I was so worried! Words flowed from Noah like a river. I was coming back, I fell asleep, I woke up, and it was getting dark, and this thing attacked me, and I think it was a vampire, and the wolf fought it, and I was so scared. And Noah's mom embraced him and held him tightly. Shh, child, child, you were scared. I'm, I'm sure your imagination got the better of you. No, Ma, I saw it. It was real. Noah's mother knelt down and held his face. Tears were in his eyes. They weren't like his father's. Eyes that were brown with an outer ring of yellow. I was so worried. Never scare me like that again. You understand, young man? Yes, Ma. Thank God you're safe. She kissed him on the forehead and smiled. You've had a long day. Wash up and I'll make you something to eat. Then you're going to bed. Okay. I love you so much. I love you too, Ma. Noah's mother hugged him again, fiercely. I'm sorry I lost the supplies. It's fine. They're just things. We'll go to town together tomorrow. I got a message from father. He won't be home for another couple of weeks, so we need some extra supplies. Now, go wash up. Noah hugged his mother once more and went to his room, started washing at the bowls on his dresser. Meanwhile, in the main room, Noah's mother smiled. She walked to the window, and she looked at the full moon as she held her right side and said a small prayer of thanks. Blood soaked through her dress and oozed between her fingers. It didn't matter. The wound would be healed by morning. The important thing was that her son was safe. Hey there kids, it's me, Mr. Creepypasta, and I just want to make sure that all of you guys are still staying safe and doing your best to stay inside and keep yourself quarantined if you can do so. For those of you who can't, really appreciate you guys doing what you, you know, have to do. So, all the best to all of you who are still working, and all the best to all of you who are forced to kind of stay home and are not able to work. If you guys are missing out on a lot of the conventions, which at this point, all of them that I was planning on going to this year with the exception of San Japan, uh, looks like have been either cancelled or pushed back. If you guys were looking forward to any of the conventions this year and are missing out on a lot of the artwork from some of your favorite authors or artists, take a look in the description down below. At least until the quarantine is over, you'll be able to find links to a bunch of my artist friends as well as authors uh, in the description of every video. And of course, I will be bringing you guys stories every single day from now until the end of time, available here on YouTube as well as here on the podcast on Spotify, Apple, iTunes and Google and wherever else you can get podcasts. And now a very special thank you, big thank you, the biggest thank you I can possibly give to all of you who support on patreon.com slash Mr. Creepypasta, who help keep the lights on in my house. Patreons such as Jordan Alexander Sanchez, Ken Lando Higuchi, Brianna Ventine Jensen, Chompinski, The Red Oak Shield Virus, Sandy Barney, G. Weevil 3, Diana Krauss, Stephen Van Huss, Tristan Pelton, Nico Cow, The Ginger Bros, Dante Rao, Rafael Rodriguez, Last Blade Song, Eliminator 86, Nebsky, Steampunk Center, Caleb Dougal, Daniel Paulson, Sky Harbor, The Homeless Bird 93, Gabrielle Undefined, Barbie Carmen, Liam Newman, Aaron Stormcrow, Dr. Strawberry, Barbara Masio, Thomas Burgett, Azazel Rotten, Let's Get Scared, S-Man, Brandy Hasanori, and King DDD. Thank you guys so much for supporting on Patreon, as well as all of you that are shown in the description down below. And sweet dreams, everyone. <laughs>